You read the one about life's train? Yes. Yeah, that should have given it. Uh-huh. Take oh, Grammy where she needs see. to go. Where should I go? <laughs> Thank you. Hello, boys and girls. Oh, See the way I dress? It's like a pioneer lady. Because we're going to have a story about some pioneers. They used to go across the country in covered wagons. But then in 1869, a wonderful thing happened. And they get to go across the country and train. It's called Transcontinental Railroad. Because it went all the way across our country first time. And so this is called Locomotive by Brian Flocka. It's got a lot of things in it, but we'll just get the main story. Here they are, and they were building the railroad. Here's how this road was built, with a grunt and a heave and a swing, with the ring of shovels on stone, the ring of hammers on spikes, clank, clank, clank. Men came from far away to build from the east, to build from the west, to meet in the middle. They cleared the rocks, dug the tunnels. They raised the hammers and brought them down. Three strokes to a spike, ten spikes to a rail. Clank, clank, clank. Working hard. Okay, here's our little family. And... Uh, it says, here your trip begins at the depot on the platform. The people here, the passengers, have packed and shipped and sold their things, all of their things, everything. They have their tickets for a trip of a week through days and nights across the country down to the sea. Look for the train that will take you the first train of the trip. Listen for the engine for the mighty locomotive. And it says here they're in Omaha, Nebraska. That's where they're starting. Okay. So, she's waiting in the rail yard, ready for her work. Hear the clang of the bell. Hear the huff of the engine. Her crew is bringing her out. Clang, 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 clang. Woo! See a puff from her stack, a puff of smoke, a smudge in the sky. Here she comes. See a puff, a, a, a smudge, a cloud, woo, a storm. Here comes a locomotive. And I don't know if you've seen a steam locomotive, but they're very noisy and big and powerful. An iron horse, the great machine, 50 feet and 40 tons, wheels spinning, rods swinging, motion within motion, running down the track. She's bright in her paint and her polish, the pride of her company and crew. She pulls her tender and train behind her. She rolls up close to where you wait, all heat and smoke and noise. Hear the clear, hard call of the bell. Clang, 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 clang. Hear the hiss and the spit of the steam. Hear the engine breathe like a beast. Huff, huff, huff. Yeah, they almost seem like they're alive. All the noise. And here's your crew. These are the brakemen. This is the fireman. He puts in the coal. This is the engineer who drives the train. And this is the conductor. And the conductor is the boss of them all. He's the captain. And he cries, all aboard step up step quick up in the cab the crew's making ready the train is about to leave see him shoveling in the coal okay this was this is just how they get the engine started there's a lot to it i'm going to skip that part for time okay so they let the steam in it pushes 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 the pistons, which push and pull the rods. The rods are these things that go back and forth. And the rods, they swing and rise and fall, making the drive wheels turn. See, it goes back and makes these two. 
wheels turn, huffs and hisses, the engine bangs and clanks. Metal rolls on metal and the locomotive moves. Woof. Okay. So there it goes out of the station and the conductor comes by and says, tickets. Um, he walks down the aisle, have them ready or have a short trip. If you don't have a ticket, he'll just he'll put you off. And he usually see he has a say, out the window, the city runs by, homes and schools and farms and fields. They rush up close and fall away. The engineer feels the wind on his face, the fire by his feet. High up in the cab, he feels the engine shudder and sway, and he feels, and he feels a shake as it picks up speed. Okay, and here we go. The sounds of the engine surround him, the rhythm of the pistons pounding, the hammers, the drivers drumming on the rails, the smoke and the steam rushing up through the stack. Chuck, 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 chuck. The engineer keeps his hand on the throttle, keeps his eyes on the line. He is the master of his machine. He knows the moods and tempers and where to set the bars and levers, and when to slow down and when to speed up and when to run her wide open full steam ahead faster faster turn the wheel faster faster breathe the engine the country runs by the cottonwoods and the river westward westward run the train through the prairies to the great plains and to the frontier Here you are riding on the train. It says, in the rattling, rocking cars, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. There are neighbors to meet and games to play and songs to sing. And if you're bored, if you're hungry, there is the butch. The butch is a boy who walks the aisle and sells books and maps and magazines and yesterday's paid newspaper and fruits and candies, soap and towels, coffee, tea, sugar, hash, beans, bacon, and all the cigars you can smoke. Let's see, I think that'd be yucky to be on a train with people smoking cigars, but <laughs> that was then. And then um, this is the stove to keep people warm in the winter, and they did have a toilet. The thing about the toilet is if the train is running and you're trying to go to the bathroom, it's a little hard, but you're not allowed to go in the station because it wasn't hooked up to anything. So anything, the hole just went down. So it was rude to do it in the station. That was a lot, that was 150 years ago. Okay. So now they're coming in, coming into the station, and they have to stop because the train needs more coal, more water. And this is where you eat. When the train is stopped, it's time for dinner. Find the railroad restaurant. Find the hash house quick. It's a dollar for dinner and 20 minutes to eat it. Don't waste time. Today's menu is buffalo steak, antelope chops, and chicken stew. And if the chicken tastes like prairie dogs, don't ask why. It's a family. <laughs> it's a family. Well, there's a, they, they have a lot of prairie dogs. Okay. Now, I think this is, they said, yes. At that last station, they switch engines and they switch crews. So they have a fresh engine. And then full steam ahead again, westward, westward, through the night the engine runs. Those up late hear the whistle, her wild and lonesome cry. It echoes on far hills and homes. It sounds in distant dreams. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ever heard a train at night, heard the whistle? You can travel a long way. And here, if you have extra money, you can get a sleeper. And the uh, porter will pull down the bed. They take the seats and they make beds. But our family is riding in coach. And you have to sleep in your chair, sitting up. And it says, ask your neighbors nicely, would you move your elbow? Would you move your foot? 
Could you please stop snoring? <laughs> In the dark, the country's changing. The plains rise like a ramp to the foot of the Rockies. By morning, the country is steep, hard work for one locomotive. And the shop at Cheyenne Station, the train gets two engines. Now the train is a double header. Up, up the two engines climb, up among mountains. See how well the train path was chosen, the mountain stage to the left, the mountain stage to the right. The train never meets them head on. It winds between, it weaves among instead of climbing over. Still up, up the two engines chug. Working together, they make the grade. They make it to Sherman Station. It may not look or feel so high, like the top of a hill or a mountain peak, but this is the highest point on the line. West of here, the country dips and drops again. West of here, one engine will do. The bell's going to ring in like a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's oh, uh, we'll skip ahead. They have lots of adventures. Here's in the Sierras going through a tunnel when they make it to California and they have to go through the Sierra Nevada mountains. And finally, finally, let's see, they come down into the station. And this says, here with the people you waited and waited and needed to see. There's Dad to greet them. And they are in Sacramento, California. And then they get on a steamboat on the Sacramento River and go down, down to their new home, in San Francisco, California. So that is the tale. Next week, uh, Mr. Taylor and I are going to get on a train and we're going to go across the country to New York. Wow. But it will be much awesome. more comfortable and nice. <laughs> How long does that take by train? Well, we're going to stop on different oh, places along nice. the way, see friends and family. Oh, that's a great so. trip. Ethan, are you jealous? Because you love train. Yeah. <laughs> but this is a nice book if you want to read it. In the front has all kinds of interesting facts and things. And then, of course, I skip some pages. So this is a great book to read. If you do you remember things. when we dressed up for Colonial Days? Yeah. Stop, do, you, do you recognize some of their outfits? Yeah. yeah this some of this was to keep the sun and the yeah. dust out of her eyes because... The, the train didn't have air conditioning. The windows would be yeah. down and it'd be dusty and hot. <laughs> yeah. Bugs. Well, good luck on your trip. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you for letting me read. Thank my you. Books. Thank you for coming. Can you guys say thank you? Thank you. And Ethan, you can show Grammy and Grump to the door and tell them thank you. Give them nice big hugs <laughs> for coming to your classroom you. today. You're very lucky. Two grandparents today.